in the last class we have discussed okay in the last class we are discussing about uh, porifera okay we are discussing about porifera porifera cellular organ multicellular animals but with a cellular level of organization okay with the cellular level of organization and next uh, okay and uh, when you observe these organisms so these organisms possess a specialized uh, okay specialized uh, system called as a water canal system okay when you observe here okay it is consisting of three components that is ostia spongoseal and osculum all these three structures are participating in a, this water canal system and next uh, our transport canal system and next when you observe ostia are the inlets through which the water will enters into the spongoseal okay and the spongoseal okay lined by some specialized cells called coenocytes and these coenocytes okay some of the coenocytes are specialized for uh, nutrition some are specialized for excretion some are uh, specialized for reproduction like that uh, in different different ways they are present okay these are all involved in uh, all these uh, physiological process and next after the completion okay that means the excretory materials are added to this water okay and next oxygen is intaken and next the food material is intaken and later this water is sent outside of the sponges through a outlet outlet which is present at the anterior end called osculum okay so and next uh, when you observe the digestion the digestion is described as intracellular that means the digestion takes place within the cells not outside the cells with it will take place completely inside the cells that's why we say the digestion is intracellular okay okay and next uh, when you observe the here the we are we are observing two layers uh, the outer pinacos dam and the inner coenoderm and the outer pinacoderm is made up of specialized cells called pinacocytes and of these okay and next uh, the cells that are present towards the inner side forming the coenoderm and they are represented by the coenocytes okay and uh, some of the pinacocytes are modified to form osteo okay ostia modified to to have ostia and next when you observe this uh, outer layer the outer layer consists of uh, the skeletal structures called as spicules or spongin fibers okay which will give the skeleton or uh, structure and the sponges okay structure and a shape to the sponges even though the sponges are irregular in shape but uh, still they maintain a particular shape okay that shape is because of the presence of this specules or spongin fibers okay that is what we have discussed up to now okay the remaining we will discuss now okay so the body is supported by skeleton made up of spicules or spongin fibers okay that means we will find the skeleton for example if you take human the human body consists of bones okay bones which will give skeleton but the skeleton is present inner side inside okay inside the body the skeleton is present but in case of this uh, sponges the skeleton is present the skeletal structures are present the body on the outer surface okay which are made up of spicules and spongin fibers that means uh, even the organism dies uh, these structures remain because these are hard structures which will resist decomposition okay that is and next uh, and next when you observe the reproduction okay the sexes are not separate that means uh, these are bisexual organisms that means uh, they possess both male and female reproductive structures okay in the same organism 
that's why we say these organisms are bisexual or hermaphrodite that is eggs and sperms are produced by the same individual the male and female sex cells that is uh, eggs and sperms both are produced by the same individual okay that is so and next okay and along with the sexual reproduction in these organisms we will find asexual reproduction also sponges reproduce asexually by fragmentation okay besides uh, sexual reproduction the sponges also undergo asexual reproduction by fragmentation budding external budding internal budding okay like this uh, we will find different types of uh, asexual reproductions and coming to the sexual reproduction the sexual reproduction is also observed the sexual reproduction occurs by the formation of gametes that is a male gamete that is sperm and the female gamete that is egg and next fertilization is internal fertilization is uh, internal that means the fertilization takes place within the body of the organism that's why we say the fertilization is internal and development is indirect what is meant by this indirect okay that means uh, what is meant by direct and indirect direct means uh, if the organism gives birth gives rise to the young ones which looks uh, similar to that of adult except in the size if the organism gives rise to after sexual reproduction if the organism gives rise to the young ones or the new individuals which are similar to that of uh, adult ones uh, size okay then such a development we say direct because directly the young one is coming but uh, there are some organisms in which okay after sexual reproduction directly the adult like organism is not obtained in between certain uh, transformation stages will be there which we commonly call it as larval forms so if the larval forms are observed in the development of any organism between the egg and the adult then we say that the development is indirect okay so that means if you observe any intermediate stage between the egg and the adult organism during its development then such a development we are calling it as indirect and whatever the intermediate stages we commonly call it as larval forms so when you observe the sponges in sponges the development is indirect and having a larval stage which is morphologically distinct from the adult okay generally we say no the okay the morphologically distinct uh, why we are saying morphologically distinct means we can observe very clearly usually the sponges are sedentary but the larval forms are uh, motile they will move they show motility which helps in dispersal of the sponges to different places okay that is so the larval forms are motile whereas the adult forms are stationary sedentary or stationary you can see okay and next examples are uh, cycon that is kypha commonly called as a kypha and next uh, spongilla that is freshwater sponge already we said okay most of them are uh, marine water forms only a few are uh, freshwater forms one such example is spongilla which belongs to the family spongilidae 
Okay, that is the freshwater sponge and a U spongia, that is the bath sponge. We can see here. This is U spongia, which is looks like a okay, soap in a soap box. Okay, in olden days, this bath sponge is used as a soap like structure to clean their uh, body in olden days. Okay. Okay, this is Sycon that commonly called we are commonly sponge we call it as. Okay, and next uh, this is uh, bath sponge that is U spongia, and next uh, this is a spongilla that is a freshwater sponge. Okay, this, this is uh, Sycon. This is U spongia. This is a spongilla. Okay. That is a sycon is a commonly called sponge. That what normally sponge is. It is a colonial form. It lives in colonies. And a U spongia is the bath sponge. And a spongilla is the freshwater sponge. Anybody is having any doubt regarding the purifera? Anybody is having any doubt? No, sir. OK. And next, coming to the next phylum, that is the cylindrata. Phylum cylindrata, or we, which we commonly call it as nidaria. Why the name given as nidaria means? The name nidaria is derived from the specialized cells that are present in these uh, organisms, so that is uh, nidoblast cells. Okay, some specialized cells called nidoblast cells, which are defensive in nature. Okay, that means which will protect the organism from predators. Okay, some okay, these specialized cells called nidoblast are present. That's why the name given as a nid area. Okay, that is the area means bearing. Nid area. Okay, the term nid okay represents to nidoblast. Okay, that is and next the term cylindrata. Why that is a given cylindrata means uh, here the cylind silo means cavity we know, but here uh, the cavity here we will find a specialized cavity called gastrovascular cavity. A specialized cavity called gastrovascular cavity is present in these organisms. Okay, due to the presence of this uh, gastrovascular cavity, we are giving this uh, name. Okay, cylindrata. Given this okay word cylindrata, okay now understood all of you. So that's why the name given as cylindrata. Cylindrata, why it was named as cylindrata means because the presence of gastrovascular cavity. Okay, it is also called as nidaria. Why it is called as nidaria? Because it possesses some specialized cells called nidoplast cells, which are defensive in nature and protect the organism from uh, predators. Okay, that's why the name given as a need area. Okay, that's the okay story behind the names that is given to this. And next, and next, coming to the characteristics of these organisms. Okay, they are aquatic. These are also aquatic, like sponges, and mostly marine. Sessile or free swimming. So mostly marine and a few are freshwater forms. A free a few freshwater forms are present, but most of them are marine sessile. Sessile means sedentary or stationary. That means they are fixed to at one place. They do not show movement. 
and some are free swimming. That means some are free living. That means they move. Okay, they move. Okay, due to the presence of tentacles. Okay, there is a sessile or free swimming. And next, uh, radially symmetrical animals. And coming to the symmetry, while we are discussing about characteristics, the basis, okay, during the basis of classification, what are the characters they have used to classify? At the time, we discussed this symmetry now. Here, uh, these are the organisms. When you observe the sporiferans, sporiferans are symmetric. They do not show any symmetry, usually. But uh, when you observe the cylindrates, the cylindrates will show radial symmetry. Okay, that means the organism can be cut into two equal halves in any plane passing through the center. Okay, any plane passing through the center. So that's why we are calling it as radial symmetry. And next, already I told you the name Nidaria is derived from the nidoblast or nidocytes, which contain the stinging capsules or nematocyst present on the tentacles and the body. So that means uh, when you observe this, uh, the term nidaria is derived from a specialized cells called nidoblast or nidocytes, which contain the stinging. Stinging means which will pierce. Okay, stinging means usually they are enclosed inside. Whenever the organism is irritated or frightened, at that time these strings will come out of these capsules and frightens the predator, okay, or a nematocyst, okay, the balancing structures, that is called a nematocyst, okay, they are present on the tentacles or a nematocyst, okay, present on the tentacles and the body, they are present mostly on the, tent more number on the tentacles, and they are also present on the body also. Okay, we can see here what are the different functions of nidoblast. Nidoblasts are used for anchorage, that is attachment with the substratum. Anchorage, attachment. And next, defense, protect from the predators. And for the capture of the prey, okay, to capture the prey also, to capture the material also, okay, they are used. Okay, that is, so the nidoblasts are, okay, helps in anchorage, that is attachment to the substratum, defense, protect against the predators, and they are also used for the capturing of the prey, for, okay, that is the food material. Okay, and next, okay, when you observe these cnidarians or cylindrates, these are the first tissue level of tissue grade, con okay, uh, tissues consisting organisms. Cnidarians exhibit a tissue level of organization, and are diploblastic. That means they possess two germinal layers. That is ectoderm and endoderm. Okay, there is a. So that means these are the first tissue grade organisms. Okay, and they are diploblastic. That means they possess two germinal layers. That is ectoderm and endoderm. And next, already I told you that. The other name that is cylindrata. We have given the other name that is cylindrata. Why we have given this uh, cylindrata means because they have a central gastrovascular cavity with a single opening. Okay, that is uh, when you observe here, we'll find a cavity that is enclosed inside this uh, nidarians. And that cavity, we are calling it as a gastrovascular cavity. And this gastrovascular cavity is having only one opening that is called mouth, we commonly call it as. That one only will act as inlet as well as outlet for the water to enter into the body of the organism and to leave from the body of the organism. Okay. Central gastrovascular cavity with a single opening. Okay, that is the mouth on hypostome. That is towards the anterior end. At the anterior end, we'll find this hypostome. Okay, this mouth. 
okay, which we are calling it as hypostome, the anterior end. And next, when you observe the digestion, the digestion is extracellular and intracellular. Okay, that means some of the food is digested inside the gastrovascular cavity, that is outside the cell. That is extracellular digestion, which is observed in almost all the higher organisms, higher animals. In all the higher animals, okay, we'll find extracellular digestion. Okay, but when you observe peripherence, in peripherence it is completely inside the cell, so only intracellular. But when it comes to nidarians, we will observe both extracellular digestion as well as the intracellular digestion. That is, the digestion process takes place outside the cells, inside the gastrovascular cavity but not inside the cells. It is outside the cells. That's why we say extracellular, but inside the body. And uh, okay, and some of the cells are also involved in digestion. That's, that means the digestion process takes place inside the cells, which we are calling it as a intracellular digestion. Okay. And next, some of the nidarians, for example, corals have a skeleton composed of calcium carbonate. That is, there are some nidarians which possess exoskeletal structures which will form the corals after their death. That's why they are commonly called as corals. Okay, generally the corals are, okay, generally the corals are marine and they are present on the bank of uh, the marine, okay, marine water bodies and forms a barrier. Usually the reefs are present in the areas where fresh water will not join the sea or ocean. That's why we don't find the coral reefs from a West Bengal up to Andhra Pradesh of a Indian. the Bay of Bengal, on the shore of Bay of Bengal, starting from West Bengal up to there, Andhra Pradesh, we don't find this coral reefs because uh, there regularly the fresh water coming and joining with the sea of Bay of Bengal. But uh, in Tamil Nadu region, we'll find this uh, coral reef barriers. And in Andaman and Nicobar Islands, we'll find coral reefs, coral reef barriers. The great barrier reef of corals is present in Australia, the largest coral reef barrier is present in Australia, in the Indian Ocean. Okay, because on the west side of uh, Australia, we'll find this Indian Ocean. So to this side, we'll find this coral reefs, the great barrier reef, the largest one. Okay, so that is the corals. Okay, they are nothing but uh, the, okay, we, because, okay, these corals, uh, even after their death, they still remain and provide space for other living organisms because they are okay, they consist of some skeletal structures which are made up of calcium carbonate. And next, when you observe here, 
the only group of animals which are showing uh, alternation of generation generally alternation of generation is observed in a uh, plants already we have discussed while we are discussing about plant kingdom okay the alternation of generation is observed in case of uh, plants it is the feature that is observed with reference to plants but this is an exception this a phylum nidaria is an exception which is uh, included under the animal kingdom but shows alternation of generation okay that is nidarians exhibit two basic body forms called polyp and medusa polyp is a free living form whereas the medusa is a stationary or sedentary form okay polyp is a free living form it's freely swimming in the water whereas the medusa is a stationary or sedentary or sessile form okay we can see here the former is sessile and a cylindrical form like hydra that is adams okay and adamsia that is sea anemone whereas the later is umbrella shaped and freely swimming like aralia or jellyfish okay the jellyfish which represents the medusa is a free living form or free swimming form which is a, okay commonly called as aralia which is commonly called as jellyfish it is the medusoid form and the free swimming form which is umbrella shaped whereas uh, the polyp which is sedentary is cylindrical in shape example hydra and adamsia that is sea anemone commonly adamsia is commonly called as sea anemone so those nidarians which exist in both forms exhibit alternation of generation that is metagenesis the alternation of generation that is exhibited in animals we call it as a metagenesis that means uh, those organisms which will exist in two forms okay for example if you observe hydra hydra occurs only in polyp form aralia that is jellyfish only occurs in a medusoid form but there are few examples which will exist in both uh, polyp and medusoid forms in those kind that condition they exhibit alternation of generation that means the polyp form will undergo sexual reproduction and produces side form medusoid form usually undergoes a sexual reproduction and produces a polyp form so the polyp form alternates with the medusoid form and this phenomena we are calling it as alternation of generation each is which is termed as a metagenesis okay we can see the polyp produce medusae asexually and medusae form the polyp sexually example obelia obelia is an example which is showing alternation of generation because it exists in two forms polyp form and a medusoid form the polyp produce sexually that means the polyp undergoes asexual reproduction and produces medusoid forms and the medusoid okay and the medusoid forms undergoes sexual reproduction and produces polyps polypoid form okay best example is obelia so polyp and medusa if both the stages are observed in an organism and they will be alternated with one another and this phenomena we are calling it as alternation of generation or metagenesis 
And next, examples of this, that is the Faisal, okay, Faisalia, that is the policies of war. Okay, Portuguese man of war. And next, Adamsia, that is sea animal, commonly called as sea animal. And next, Penatula, which is commonly called as sea pen, because it likes look, look, okay, it is elongated and looks like a pen. And next, a Gorgonia, which is commonly called as sea fan, because it is a little bit expanded and looks like a Japanese fan. Okay, in Japan, we use, okay, they have, they have got uh, one hand fan. Okay, that is called Japanese fan. Okay, that is, that's why it, as it looks like that of uh, the Japanese uh, fan. Okay, it looks like, okay, that's why we are calling it as sea fan. And next, Miadrina, okay, that is commonly called as a brain coral. Okay, here some of, okay, we can see here, this is Aurelia fish, and this is uh, Adamsia, that is sea animal. Okay, this is the medicinoid form, and this is the polyp form. Okay, sea animal, that, okay, that is a medicinoid. Okay, we can see here. Okay, the umbrella like arrangement, and here it is cylindrical in arrangement. Medicide and polyforms. Okay, in the sea anemone and hide, okay, sea anemone and Aurelia. Aurelia exhibit, okay, exists only in medus, okay, medicide forms, whereas the sea anemone exists, exhibits only polyforms. We don't find both in this. Only in Obelia, only we observe both polyp and medicide form. Okay, here we can see the structure of nidoblastoma. Okay, we can see here a sting like coming out. Usually it will be present in, enclosed inside in a coiled like watch spring. But at the time when the organism is irritated or frightened, at that time, this uh, string-like structure is emerged out. Okay, this is the nidoblast cell. This is a single cell. Understood. Anybody is having any doubt? Anybody is having any doubt regarding the Nidarians? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Next. Okay. The, the third phylum that is a Tino for a the third phylum that is a tenophora. Okay, when you observe the tenophores, the tenophores are commonly known as sea walnuts or comb jellies or exclusively marine. Exclusively, exclusively means completely, completely marine. There are no freshwater forms in tenophores. They are completely marine, exclusively marine, and they are radially symmetrical, diploblastic, okay, organisms with the tissue level of organization. Okay, before there is no tenophorama, before, okay, in the world classification of animal kingdom, there is no separate phylum for a tenophora. Usually, they are also included under a cylindrata only. But uh, in the modern classification, okay, this uh, tenophores were separated from the cylindrates and they have given a separate phylum that is a tenophora. Okay, that's okay. And we can observe the characters that are exhibited by this tenophores are almost similar to that of uh, cylindrata only. Only a few characters will be deferred. That one we'll discuss one by one, okay? So that's whatever that we are discussing, okay? Discussed up to now, there is a 
they are exclusively marine that is radially symmetrical and a diploblastic organism with tissue level of organization all these characters are also exhibited by the cylindrate then what is the difference okay when you observe here why the what is the difference means the body bears eight extreme okay eight external rows of uh, ciliated comb plates which help in locomotion okay this is the character that we observe a little bit deferred so that means the body consists of eight external rows of ciliated comb plates which help in a locomotion which help in a locomotion Okay, and next digestion is both extracellular and intracellular. It is similar to that of cylindrates. And next, okay, as these pores usually occur at the bottom of the sea, where light is very less or light does not penetrate. Okay, they exhibit uh, or they produce. Uh, cold light or they can produce their own light that phenomena we are calling it as a bioluminescence the property of living organism to emit light you can observe you now some fireflies okay some fireflies uh, during day okay during night time we can observe uh, emitting light okay this is to attract opposite organism opposite sex of the organism okay okay and that phenomenon that uh, the, okay this phenomenon of uh, emitting of light by the living organisms we are calling it as a bioluminescence okay it does not produce any heat only light only produced that's why it is also called cold light also okay it is because of certain chemical reactions that are taking place in the organism okay it is because of the certain chemical reactions that are taking place in the organism which is responsible for this uh, bioluminescence okay that is bioluminescence the property of living organism to emit light is well marked in tenophores okay we'll observe very clearly in tenophores okay like in other organisms like fireflies okay. and next sexes are not separate that means they are bisexual okay reproduction takes place only by sexual means okay that is okay this is the difference we can observe in case of uh, cylindrates we will find both sexual as well as asexual reproduction in the organisms which are showing alternation of generation the polyp undergoes asexual reproduction and produces medicide forms and the medicide forms undergo sexual reproduction and uh, produces uh, polyforms so that is so we can observe both sexual as well as asexual reproduction but these the tenophores are an exceptions okay that's why this tenophores were separated from the cylindrata and given a separate group that a separate phylum that is tenophora because the sexes okay here we'll observe only sexual reproduction and next fertilization is external with indirect development and the fertilization is external that means the fusion of a male and female gamete the sperm and the egg will take place outside the body of the organism that's why the fertilization we say external and the development is indirect that means the larval stage is present in between the zygote and the young one 
before it develops into the adult. Okay, examples for this uh, tenophores. There is a pleurobranchia and a tenoplana. Okay, pleurobranchia and a tenoplana are the examples for this uh, tenophore. Okay. Anybody is having any doubt regarding Tinofora? No, sir. And next. And the next phylum is uh, phylum platyhelminths. Okay, the name itself is indicating. Here the term plat means uh, they are uh, thin ribbon-like, flat, dorsoventrally flattened. Helminth means warm-like. So these are flat, warm-like. That's why. These flatty helminths are commonly called as uh, flat worms. Okay, that is that's why the name given as platy helminths. Okay, they have dorso ventrally flattened body, hence are called flat worms. Okay, they are uh, very okay. They are like leaf like, dorso ventrally flattened, like a leaf. That's why we are calling them as flat worms. And next, most of the organisms that were included under this phylum platy helminths are uh, parasites, especially endoparasites. That means they live inside the body of uh, another organism, say vertebrate. So as they live completely inside the body of another organism, so we are calling them as endoparasites. So they are, okay, these are mostly endoparasites found in animals, including human beings. Including human beings. Inside the human, we'll find certain platy helminths like a tapeworm. Tinea solium, scientific name of this tapeworm is a Tinea solium, which lives inside the small intestine. Of a human. Okay, these tapeworms are usually present in the humans. Who will eat pork because the intermediate host for this tapeworm is a pig. That means some development, okay, some larval stages are developed within the pig. And uh, after development into the certain larval stage, it will stay in the muscles of the pig for about five to six years. Those persons will eat uh, improperly cooked pork. Okay, through that, improperly cooked pork the the larval stages of this tapeworm will enter into the human body or human digestive system and further development of this will take place in the human and develops into adults 
and one thing you have to remember ma usually only one tapeworm lives in the body of a one human or small intestine of human only one tapeworm lives in the small intestine of a pre human okay when when one tapeworm is growing it does not allow other organisms to grow okay and this tapeworm usually grows up to 2 meters very long more than the length of the human body it is coiled inside okay it is present in the form of highly coiled structure in the small intestine of a human so that's why so in the small intestine okay so we can say as endoparasite so these are mostly endoparasites found in animals including human beings example tapeworm we can say flatworms are bilaterally symmetrical they show bilateral symmetry that means the organism can be cut into two equal halves in only one plane one plane passing through the center that is median sagittal plane so they are showing bilateral symmetry and next they are triploblastic that means they possess three germinal layers ectoderm and and mesoderm and uh, these are acylomate organism that means they do not possess uh, any body cavity okay the body cavity which is lined by mesoderm is absent because uh, if the body cavity is completely filled with the tissue some tissue made up of mesodermal cells so we don't find cavity but tissue of a mesoderm is present that's why we say acylomate animals with the organ level of organization okay these are the first organisms with the organ level of organization okay that is okay and next when you observe here as already we said these are mostly the endoparasites very few are free living like ants which visually lives at the bottom of the water as benthic organisms benthic means which lives at the bottom of the water okay these okay these are free living and they depend upon the the dead and decaying organic matter that is fallen from the upper layers to the bottom of the water so that's why we can we'll say that these are free living that means they do not parasite on any other organisms okay this is planarians if okay exception to this parasitic nature okay that's why we say mostly endoparasites okay as they are parasites are endoparasites and they live in the small intestine living in the small intestine generally whatever the food we take if it is undigested it is sending out okay it will come along with the undigested food material any material any material whatever you take if it is not digested usually it will come along with the undigested food material but why this uh, parasites which are living in the same intestine they are not coming out along with the undigested food material why because okay they are having some specialized anchorage structures like a hooks and a suckers okay they possess certain structures called hooks and suckers are present in the parasitic form hooks and are present which helps in attachment to the body of the host and next in these endoparasitic organisms 
the digestive system is uh, not well developed poor poorly developed digestive system is observed why poorly developed digestive system is present means because there is no need of any digestion for them because as these organisms are already living in the region where the food is already digested so they can absorb directly the digested food through their body surface okay they usually pose okay that is so okay as they usually lose inside the body where the digestive already the food is digested so they can absorb the nutrients through their body surface so there is no need of much of digestive system so the digestive system is not well developed and it is in reduced condition or rudimentary okay that is what we can see here okay some of them absorb nutrient from the host directly through their body surface that's why usually in the endo okay in this parasitic forms the digestive system is not well developed and uh, but uh, when you observe the excretion the but the excretion is done by some specialized cells some specialized cells called flame cells help in osmoregulation and excretion okay that is the body ba okay water balance inside the body okay water balance and uh, electrolyte balance in the body this water and electrolyte balance in the body we together we are calling it as osmoregulation and that and along with that it is also helps in a removal of nitrogenous waste what are those cells means those cells are nothing but flame cells some specialized cells called flame cells are involved in osmoregulation and excretion remember one thing very clearly ma the primary function of any excretory organ is osmoregulation and the secondary function only excretion primary function of any excretory structure is osmoregulation and the secondary function only excretion that is removal of nitrogenous waste okay water and electrolyte balance or chemical balance okay and next success of plants i told you usually a form is present in the body of one organism then how the reproduction occurs we can say but because the organisms are bisexual the organisms are bisexuals because that's why we are saying sexes are not separate we don't find male and female separately we'll find only one organism possessing both male and female that's why even one organism is present in the body is enough to produce the new generation and next the fertilization is internal that means the, the fertilization takes place inside the body of the organism inside the body of the organism so we say fertilization is internal and next the development is uh, indirect uh, with the many larval stages okay fertilization is internal and development is through many larval stages that means in between the zygote and the young one the adult one will find a la okay many stages of larvas okay and finally they give rise to the adult organism so we'll find the development is indirect with the la many larval stages and next some members like a planaria possess a high regeneration capacity okay you might have studied in your lower class if you divide a planaria into three halves okay each part is able to develop into a new organism this is because of the presence of regeneration that is what we can observe at high level in case of planarians so examples for this uh, platy helminths is a tinea solium tinea solium that is commonly called as a tapeworm 
And next one is the fasciola, that is fasciola hepatica, which is commonly called as a liver fluke. Liver fluke. Okay, usually it affects uh, the sheep. Okay, that is it. So these are the, some of the examples of this uh, flat helmets. Okay, here we can see the flat helmet, the tapeworm, which is coiled like a ribbon. Thin and many body segments are present. Okay, some thousand to twelve hundred uh, segments are present in each tapeworm, which are regularly detached and newly. And the and they are also newly formed. From one end they are detached, and from another end they are newly formed. Okay, and this is the second one is a liver fluke that is fasciola hepatica. Here we can see the mouth, and we can find the sucker. On the lateral side we can observe the sucker, and at the anterior end we'll find the mouth. Okay, which helps in attachment to the body of the host. Okay, that is about this uh, plate helmets. Anybody is having any doubt? No, sir. No, sir. 